Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Those are the words we hear at Mass every day or every time we go that the priest says right before the reception of Holy Communion. And remember in the New English Translation of the Mass uh, back in 2010, so about 12 years ago, they brought back the word behold um, as a way to move away from this is the Lamb of God, which we had been saying for probably about 40 years in the English translation. They wanted to re-emphasize the connection with several moments scripturally uh, in which we hear behold. One is behold the Lamb that uh, St. John the Baptist says to his disciples when he points at Jesus and he says, behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, uh, reinforcing that this is the Messiah. Uh, reminding us that Isaiah had used that language for the suffering servant, which had messianic implications. This, this servant that would go to their uh, slaughter like a lamb, uh, silent. And um, so the other moment is with behold the lamb, or excuse me, the word behold, is when Pilate points to Jesus at the moment of his uh, about to be uh, executed and crucified. He turns to the people and says, behold the lamb, Behold the man um, after he's been scourged, hoping that that satisfied the people and that they wouldn't keep insisting on crucifixion. Uh, so again, Jesus the Lamb being held and bound, silently being led off to his, um, his crucifixion. So the masterpiece number 20 that we're talking about today is called Behold, or excuse me, On You Stay, the Lamb of God. And sometimes called, um, as it in the the Bound Lamb, and it's found in the Prado Museum in Madrid, and it's by Francisco Zerberan. It was painted in 1635 to 1640. Just a beautiful piece of work of a, a pure, innocent, kind of, you know, um, perfect lamb, kind of, again, silently and kind of resolved to go to its death as it's bound, that connection to Jesus. And, um, and so, this is a piece of work that was done in Catholic Spain. They mentioned that Zerberon was a, a student of a much more famous Spanish artist, Velazquez, who uh, was hired by the court of Philip IV, and, uh, who was the king, the Catholic king. So he'd done a lot more work that got, got a lot of notoriety. But Zaboron really, they say, and it, um, it really holds his own as a, a great painter of Spain in the, uh, in the late Middle Ages. So he would do religious art, but also he would do stills. Um, he, he worked mainly out of Seville. And then eventually Seville, um, the, the monasteries, he did more work for monasteries, whereas Velasquez was doing more work for the, uh, the king. So he did a lot more um, kind of ascetical, sacred images for the monks. But eventually with the persecution of, the, uh, you know, uh, of the, the monks in the later 1600s, um, the work kind of there dried up and they, they say he ended up kind of going to Madrid and dying in poverty um, later in the 1600s. I believe, I forget when, what year he died, but um, but nonetheless, and they do mention that, uh, that the, his tutor, that was Velazquez, really was, became one of the, the, the most famous, best known uh, painters of Western art. But uh, the Zerabon was right there behind him. The symptoms call him the Spanish Caravaggio. He used a lot of light. As you can see in this picture, it's all pretty much dark beyond the object of focus, the lamb that's all lit up. And um, so the kind of use of light, they say they probably ne never met Caravaggio, Caravaggio and uh, Zerabon, but it's very similar in their use of light. Um, and again, kind of aesthetic in his artwork, uh, but very profound and had a big impact. Um, they kind of say that like El Greco, if El Greco, who we talked about before, was kind of, the, uh, his, his artwork was poetic. They say that Zerabon's would be visual prose. And I love that imagery, that Greco kind of is a poetry, uh, a visual poetry, and um, Zerabon is more visual prose, because I can relate more to prose. I tend to, prose speaks to me more than poetry. So sometimes with artwork, I just want it to be 
clear and, 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 and outright as to what it's trying to represent and not have make you work to figure out what it is and what it's saying. And they kind of say that's the way that Zerubon was. He was very straightforward. Um, but uh, the, um, the other thing that I was going to, to mention is that as they came to the end, they say he was one of his last um, pieces of work, his artwork was called and it was kind of a lasting testament to his devotion. They said it kind of wraps up this artist in a nutshell. It was called The Crucified Christ Contemplated by a, a Painter. It was uh, painted in 1660. It shows an artist who is probably himself, right, Zerubon, with palette and brushes in hand, gazing reverently at Christ hanging on the cross. This mystical contemplation is the perfect summation of his life and of his status of one of the greatest of religious painters and how it was really a kind of more a contemplative, mystical um, approach to painting. So certainly grateful for the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God, and, um, and I encourage you to check out all these paintings. I haven't really mentioned it clearly, but the goal of this would be when you see the title of the painting, if you're doing the series, to go find it on the internet so you have it in front of you, because obviously I'm not providing it. The assumption is that you're able to find it and get these pieces of art on your artwork on your own. Uh, obviously, I'm not taking care of that part for you. Also, if you can uh, subscribe to the, this, the uh, OLP YouTube channel and hit alerts for when live uh, recordings or these recordings are going up. That can help you keep track. It gives you a direct link so you can watch the video. So if you haven't done that already, uh, make sure you subscribe to OLP, the Our Lady of Peace YouTube channel. Uh, hit the alerts so you can get alerts when we release videos and that'll help this work for you better. So our next um, masterpiece, number 21, is one of my favorites, St. Teresa in Ecstasy by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Uh, from Rome. So we'll get to see a, a piece of um, artwork that is statuary, that is a sculpture. So thank you for joining me. Have a great day and God bless.